Hi everybody, it's me, I'm Matt Hawes, the Happy Show here today with yet another video vlog. That's right, it's May 8th, 2008, and this is the second video vlog that I've made today. And there's a reason for it. I was discussing the partnership program and the deal where Anakin 1814 got rejected and took a week off from YouTube and then came back uh, just today, I guess. And uh, I discussed that in length, some of my views, which I had talked about before, but there's stuff I still want to talk about that I didn't cover in that last video, and I was limited for time. Uh, Anakin 1814 Fan Site, which is another YouTube channel created by a, another YouTuber for in support of Anakin. There's a couple of uh, videos posted. I'll leave a link over here to the Anakin 1814 Fan Site page. And one of them was by old Kurt. He makes some points which I had thought about and I did want to bring up in, in the last video. And that is about how the partnership breeds divisiveness. He talks about how it creates a sense of elitism. And it does. It can't help but do that, especially when people are rejected or not rejected. I felt that, I mean, it started out as being a leaders project, let's be honest. In the very beginning, only the top YouTubers, that is, the people who had hundreds of thousands of views per video, the people who had hundreds of thousands to millions of subscribers, millions of views, you know, nobody who was under like a hundred something thousand dollars, or hundred hundred thousand views per video seemed to be included into this into the sub uh, special club and that was over a year ago whenever they were testing the water so to speak with the biggest of the of the big on YouTube basically what happened though is because these people had so many views YouTube went to them and tested this partnership thing on them and that then at that time it definitely was an elitist club but the thing is, most people were kind of annoyed, like, why are these big guys getting it? But there was already this separation, this wide divide, where people, I mean, the fact that we even refer to them as the big YouTubers already shows there's a, this, this divide between uh, what we consider the regular YouTubers and what we consider the celebrity YouTubers, which that term has also been applied to these, to these people that's of that level of views. And so, whenever the program came became offered to supposedly everybody on YouTube, well, there was this idea like, oh, we all get a chance to dip into this and get a share of the pie and blah blah blah. But the truth is, of course, you know, there was people being uh, that weren't going to be accepted because they had copyright material and the, on their stuff, and the, YouTube does not, of course, support that. And when I say copyright material, I mean they were infringing on other people's copyrights, not that their material material was copyrighted by them, but there was infringing on that or questionable videos for whatever reason. The thing that was perplexing is whenever there was people like Gary, who as far as I know doesn't use any copyrighted materials that he doesn't have the approval, uh, if somebody hasn't given the approval to use, like say the you know the music that somebody else created but allowed him to use and gave him permission and such. Uh, I, I, all of his content seems to be original that I've seen and he speaks his mind and I'm thinking okay there's other vloggers who just speak their, their mind and I mean I don't quite get that I agree I don't agree with why he was rejected but that is yet another sense of uh, when people at least when you got rejected and you weren't putting up stuff that was totally 100% your own or you know was on the skirting the issue that made sense that should make sense to anybody why they didn't get approved. But whenever it's something like Gary's case, it does create more of the sense of, of elitism because it's like, well, why isn't he getting getting approved? And uh, I said, why well, I'm, I'm not worried about the partnership program in my last video and my problems that I have with the advertisement and all that. But for those who want to be part of the partnership program, it, it is kind of confusing. What What is the criteria? I've said before again that people want to know what's the what, what these terms are, but YouTube won't make it public. Why wasn't Why won't YouTube make it public? I think the truth is because a lot of people would stop trying to apply if they knew really what was there. What you know, the, like Kurt mentions without being specific that you get you know pennies per you know pennies per video, and I might be exaggeration or whatever, but again it goes along with what I had already said before in my past video without knowing the terms but my own assumption is that you're not going to get 
really any money unless you unless you maintain hundreds of thousands of views. Now the thing though that people the reason I really wanted to bring up this video again is I want people to realize one thing. Get this into your heads because I've seen so many people get angry and mad or whatever because YouTube this or YouTube that you know and it's specifically about <clears throat> this partnership about not not uh, not approving their their thing. Understand this. YouTube is a corporation. It is a company. It's it's a business. It's not our friend. It's nice that we got this free service, but at the same time, keep in mind, while YouTube is free, it makes money whether you're a part of the partnership or program or not. It makes money off the views your videos generate. Even if you only make so many hits, because some of us, there's, you know, some people like I, I don't watch the, the top dogs again. So, but I'm getting views. I'm, you know, my views are going towards these other people that most times don't even get a hundred subscribers, right? Or at least don't get a thousand. You know, they might be, you know, they don't get a lot of subscribers as on a relative basis. And YouTube makes money from those hits as much as anything because those are people still watching their site that may look at ads or whatever. But YouTube is not our friend. And sometimes there's a sense of rejection and a sense of hurt and betrayal that people seem to project onto this, this corporate entity. YouTube is all about the money. And I'm not even condemning it for that. I'm just saying, realize that. It is a business. That's, you know, it would, if they didn't make money, we wouldn't be on this site. And they wouldn't offer this thing for free if we weren't generating it revenue through the ads and all that. You know, uh, I don't bring this up to condemn them, even though I do think they should try. I, I would like there to be more genuine. Uh, uh, I, I like the I like YouTube to be more genuine with us and let us know, let people know, that's what this is about. Don't don't they try to foster this whole idea that uh, there's community. The community exists within itself and on it and of itself. The community is itself. YouTube is not the community. YouTube is just it's just the, the the place where we all gather, let's be honest. YouTube did not create the community, it gave us a place to meet. We would, you know, the, the community could have rose up at another website, had it been another website with a similar thing at the same time. YouTube was just there, and the people went to it, and then the people met the other people through it. It could have been any other site, really. YouTube wants to act like it's fostering the community because it wants to create this sense of goodwill to get people active in this on its site to generate it revenue. But ultimately, it really don't care. Do you? Does anybody really think YouTube, as a as a whole, the 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 main architects of YouTube, Steven, all that chat, and, and everybody else, do they think that they're really monitoring videos and following? I mean, there might be some people that they actually check out, but as a rule, no, and, and especially the people who now that's become owned by Google, the CEO and all that, probably don't even watch YouTube themselves. It's just a corporation. So don't be hurt, don't be offended, don't be annoyed because YouTube doesn't approve the thing in the sense, I mean, you'd be mad at the inequality of it in, in the, on a more a more impersonal level, so to speak. Be mad that that's a corporation that's not handling things properly and complain about that. I'm not saying to be happy with that. I'm saying don't talk out, don't talk like YouTube like it's a person. Don't talk like it's your best friend and then you find out it stabbed you in the back. It's not your best friend. It never was your friend. YouTube is a business and once you realize that you'll realize why it makes the decisions it does doesn't mean you'll like it and it should, shouldn't mean you should approve of it because we should call them on every time they do something wrong but realize it's not your friend it's a business and that's my video vlog for today yay